Welcome back to the laboratory. This time we're going back to a low production value video, but I got things to do on the Mustang and figured some people might be interested in watching me work on them. So this is a header gasket. You might think that the job today is to replace the header gaskets. In fact, it's to replace the headers themselves. I, long story short, accidentally bought the wrong headers. Now they're in the car. I made them fit. But there's one header tube that is just not getting along well with the clutch cable, and eventually the clutch cable is going to lose that battle. So I have purchased the correct headers now. So we've got to take the old headers out, put the new headers in, and then I'm going to have to completely rebuild my H-pipe because I modified it to fit the old headers. So that's what you're going to see. Now, while the headers are out, I'm going to replace the engine mounts with some super tough, heavy duty, strong mounts because I still have the factory original mounts in this thing and we're kind of abusing them. So that's what we're after. First thing is to get the steering shaft out on the driver's side because it is intertwined with the header on that side. Once that steering shaft is out, then we can pull out the existing headers. And once they're out, then we'll swap the engine mounts. And once the mounts are swapped, then we'll stick in the new headers. And then finally, we'll do what we have to do to make the H-pipe fit the new headers. So let's get after that steering shaft. All right, we're in our summer shop clothes and we, uh, we need to pull out the steering shaft. So the steering shaft has got the one bolt. Hopefully you can see it right there. And then there's a rag joint at the bottom end. There's two bolts that go through there. So we'll start with pulling out this bolt. And that's the sound of something falling into the abyss. All right, well, now we gotta do the rag joint end. We're gonna have to do the uh, rag joint here in two halves. We'll get this bolt. Well, that wasn't very tight at all. Uh, and then after we pull this one out, we'll turn the steering shaft 180 degrees and then we'll pull the other one out. Then we can drop the steering shaft out. So let's get this one out. Okay, now we need to drop the car, turn the steering shaft 180 degrees, and then pull the other one out. All right, same thing on the bottom bolt. Now we can push the steering shaft up a little bit to get the bolts to clear. And we might have to do some prying. Okay, I got one side loose. There's the other side. And there's our steering shaft. Next thing is to pull all the spark plugs out, uh, get them out of the way, and then we can start unbolting the header and then fighting with the dipstick. Uh, this side, the header should drop out the bottom, uh, no problem. That side, might be a little bit more difficult. If you were paying attention when we're underneath the car, you'll notice the transmission and the clutch are out because it seems like with this car, they're usually out. Uh, might have to pull off the flywheel and the block saver and the starter on the passenger side before I can get that header out. Uh, it's certainly not gonna go out the bottom. There's not enough room that way, but if we're lucky, it might come out the top. We'll see. Let's get after this side first.
that's one. Um, I was hoping I was going to get lucky and I could pull this thing out without having to remove the block plate and the flywheel and the spark plugs. And as you just saw, I didn't get lucky at all. I had to remove all of those. Good news is now on the passenger side, all of that stuff's out of the way. So hopefully that header will come out quicker and easier. So let's get after that now. And there's the other one. This one came out pretty smooth. Didn't even have to take the oxygen sensor out. It dropped out really nice once I had the uh, block saver and the starter nut out of the way. So now let's get the new headers out of the box and see how different they are. And then jam them in. Now we're going to get underneath the car. We're going to slide these things up and in. Hopefully it goes smooth. We're going to leave the bubble wrap um, on them to try and keep from scratching up my fancy new shiny ceramic coated headers. And then once we get them in place, we can cut the bubble wrap off. But let's see how this goes. So that went surprisingly smooth. In fact, smoother than I've ever installed a set of headers. That's the good news. The bad news is I was so excited about putting in my new headers, I forgot about changing the engine mounts while the headers were out. So now we're gonna change the engine mounts while the headers are in. Let's see how that goes. All right, here's our setup for doing the engine mount. So we're gonna lift the engine one side at a time. I'm gonna crawl underneath there and as soon as we can get the stud clear of the frame, I'll undo the two bolts holding the mount onto the engine. Slide it out, hopefully without the header getting too much in the way, slide the new one in, bolt it all up, drop it down, and then swap over to the other side. And I just realized now I forgot to turn down the sound. I got the live feed on the TV here right now from Rocky Mountain Race Week. Uh, again, border is still closed, so I'm stuck in this country and have to watch all my friends uh, via remote control have all of the fun, but hopefully next year I'll be back there uh, again. So we'll uh, we'll put you on the other camera. We'll get a time lapse going of me fighting along underneath the car, and uh, let's get these mounts swapped.
the mounts went in, and again, that went really, really smooth. Headers didn't cause much trouble at all. Um, but man, it's hot, and uh, I'm not used to crawling underneath the car anymore since I got this lift. I'm getting too old for this stuff. Anyway, I'm missing some parts. Uh, I need to put the transmission and clutch um, back together, so that needs to go in there first before we can tackle the H pipe with the new headers. So it might be a few days until we get that stuff together, but we'll pick it up then. Several days later now, and remember how I said that was like the easiest, smoothest header install ever? Uh, yeah, no. Um, headers went in, okay, but scatter shield, not so much. So my brand new headers, which are specifically designed for manual transmission, do not get along at all. In other words, no bueno, no fit, no possibility with my scatter shield. Uh, the headers went in because the scatter shield wasn't there, but with the headers in, you could not put the scatter shield in. Uh, that's a big problem. Now, this isn't TV. I'm not sponsored. I'm not getting this stuff for free. I'm not obligated to say that everything went smoothly, everything fits perfect, everything works perfectly when it doesn't. This didn't. So I'm completely free to say that BBK, you suck. And now the problem is I've got two sets of BBK headers, neither of which work. One fries the clutch cable, the other one doesn't allow you to install the scatter shield. I've got my old race headers, which are not streetable because they're slipped together. Uh, and I've got my old street headers, which aren't ceramic coated. Uh, and I don't really want to put that amount of rust through my engine. And plus those are only inch and a half primaries too. So I don't really want to give up that little bit of horsepower with those smaller headers. So now I really need to decide what I'm going to do for headers because I've got four sets of headers and all of them have problems. So, tune in next time. See what happens.